Hey guys, my name is Jack Tor and welcome to my YouTube channel. G'day and good morning guys from the beautiful Georgetown here in Malaysia. So I'm going to be taking you guys along with me to see the best things to do in one day in this extraordinary town. I'm with my friend Wes once again. He's going to be joining us today on the adventure to see the top things to do in this town. So we're going to be seeing the best food, the best activities and the best ways to get around this town. So. Come along with me today, guys. Let's experience Georgetown together. So we've just stopped off at our first stop today. So we're having the famous Luxa. I'll leave a Google Maps link in the description to everywhere that we go today. But this is apparently a really famous dish. So essentially, I'll show you what we have. So what's in it is essentially, um, I believe this is soy sauce. And then it's a mix of noodles with fish and different vegetables as well as pineapple and chili. So yeah, let's dig into this one. So you get that heap of chili, but it's also really like soft and, and creamy, the soup. And the pineapple also sweetens it up. You don't really taste the fish. Um, let me taste the broth. Oh, okay. So the broth's a little bit more of that fishy taste. But yeah, overall really nice. I can see why this is a famous soup. It tastes really wholesome and like handmade. So this street is known for the most famous food and it's called Penang Street. You could see that line there lining up for some type of dessert or something. I would get it but I am so full from that laksa. So right now we're actually going to get a local bus which should only be about maybe three ringgit which is a dollar. A, a dollar Australian 70 cents US to go to Penang Hill and next to Penang Hill is also um, a lot of temples and all different sort of attractions there. So we're at the bus station, just got to find bus 502. So We just jumped off the bus now. As you can see behind me, there's a massive traffic jam. So we decided to just walk to our first tourist attraction, which is Penang Hill, which is a hill that looks out of all of Penang. And I believe that you can get a, um, like a tram that goes vertically up the hill that way. So we're gonna go check that out and see how that is. But yeah, sometimes it's just quicker to walk our bus wasn't moving at all and right now is actually the busiest time of the year in Penang which we didn't realize when we came here so I'm pretty sure this whole line of cars all of them are going to Penang Hill so I think it's going to be pretty packed once we get there but that's okay don't be deceived on this video about the amount of people here as I said before we have came in peak season unknowingly so I think when you come here, it should be completely fine and there shouldn't be much of a wait. But yeah, we'll soon find out once we get there. Yeah, so I wasn't wrong. It is extremely busy here. 
Yeah guys, so unfortunately we couldn't make it up Penang Hill because we were pressed for time. But here's some stock footage I found to show you guys. Obviously getting the train up is an amazing view and totally worth it. The second stop on our trip we went to Phan Khon Thana Temple. Apologies if I'm saying it wrong. This temple is a Chinese Taiwanese temple in Air Talam, Penang, near the foot of Penang Hill. It is Malaysia's only temple dedicated to the worship of Jade Emperor and it serves as a focal point of the annual Jade Emperor's birthday celebrations which happen on the ninth day of Chinese New Year. Just walking to the Bat Cave Temple now. Check out oh, the size of these leaves. <laughs> you ever seen a leaf that big? Really, really big. After that, we hit up the Bat Cave Temple. This was an interesting little temple and run by a few people who were selling snacks out the front. There was no one there, so Wes and I just walked in. Got pretty close to the bats, not gonna lie. I think I pissed one off and it flew away. <laughs> After that, we saw a little shrine where one of the statues was burnt to charcoal. I still can't work out why that is. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Obviously you guys just saw that fish, the fishes then. To be honest, I'm not really happy about that. You saw those two massive fish, at least a meter and a half long, 30 centimeters wide, in that small little enclosure with other little fish, and it was dirty, and there was no like plants or even fake plants for them to swim around and in a cage like that. I just spoke to the guy who manages that temple and he said the fish are from the Mekon which I believe he's referring to Mekon Delta which from my knowledge is really far away from here so they've been transported all this way just seems really strange you know sometimes there's these cultural traditions and stuff with animals that don't really make sense for me but that's why I want to share it with you guys so you can see the world and see different things. But personally, I don't really feel too, too good about that. But anyway, just an interesting thing to say. A third stop was at Jingangshan, Penang Hill Temple. We were actually able to stumble across some local women praying which was a lovely sight to see and they're also singing as well. This temple is a lovely little temple and they have a nice garden out the back where they also have a gong that you can hit for good luck and prosperity. I couldn't help myself but to hit that one. After that we just went for a little walk around and enjoyed the nature as it was backed onto a river. It was also extremely interesting to see the local kitchen setup that the women use to cook. I say that some of them live there at the temple. Any building that's built into the side of a rock is just cool. Like that goes for buildings that build around a tree or something like that. I just love buildings that incorporate nature. Like look, this whole rock is basically the wall. Insane. After that, it was time to head back into town. We took a local bus for a dollar each and went straight to Little India. Once again, another popular restaurant in Penang. I tell you what, these popular restaurants are scattered everywhere. Like, everywhere we walk, there's just lines of people coming out of restaurants trying to get in. This really is a food capital of Malaysia, let me tell you. Little India consists of one main street and a few side streets of food, clothing and little souvenirs that you can buy. It's an awesome spot to stop around for a few hours. 
Some of the stores even have little snacks that you can buy, which is a good little treat to nibble on as you walk around and explore Little India. Wes and I were starving, so we decided to both get a biryani each, which we polished off very well. So we absolutely demolished this curry. So now Wes and I are actually off to the bus station. We are heading to Kuala Lumpur, which is our next destination here in Malaysia. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you want to see more content from Malaysia. Thank you for watching today. And as always guys, Keep it real. Cheers.